medial collateral ligament of the knee. MCL is the most commonly injured ligament of the knee. It is a strong ligament and it fails in valgus. The medial collateral ligament anatomy. The origin is sulcus on the distal medial femoral epicondyle. It inserts into the proximal tibia. It has two parts, the superficial, which is called the tibial collateral ligament, and it is deep to the semitendinosus and the gracilis tendon. It has a broad insertion, 4 to 6 cm distal to the joint line, deep to the pes and serenus. The other part of the medial collateral ligament is the deep medial capsular ligament. It blends with the superficial ligament distally and it is associated with the medial meniscus through the coronary ligament. The posterior fibers of the deep MCL blend with the posterior medial capsule and the posterior oblique ligament. What is the posterior oblique ligament? P-O-L. It arises from the medial surface of the femur, distal to the adductor tubercle, and posterior to the origin of the superficial MCL. It inserts in the posterior medial corner of the tibia. It resists internal tibial rotation in extension. The proximal attachment of the superficial MCL is on the posterior aspect of the medial femoral condyle, approximately 3.2 mm proximal and 4.8 mm posterior to the medial epicondyle of the femur. The medial patellofemoral ligament originate between the medial epicondyle of the femur and the adductor tubercle just anterior and distal to the adductor tubercle and superior to the superficial medial collateral ligament. The function of the superficial medial collateral ligament it is the primary restraint to valgus stress at the knee. The length is about 9.5 cm has anterior fibers and posterior fibers. The anterior fibers is tighter during 90 degree knee flexion. The posterior fibers is tight with knee extension. The anterior portion of the medial collateral ligament is the primary stabilizer at 30 degree of flexion. Therefore, to test injury of the medial collateral ligament, you will examine the knee in about 30 degree of flexion. While testing instability in 30 degree of flexion is specific for the MCL, testing valgus instability in extension is not specific. And what you testing is the posterior part of the MCL, the posterior oblique ligament, the ACL, the medial posterior capsule, and possibly the PCL. Clinical exam and findings may be subtle for MCL rupture, and valgus stress test in theory degree flexion may be very helpful. Make sure the leg is free at the edge of the table so you can do the test correctly. An opening of 5 mm or more compared to the opposite knee indicates complete MCL rupture. Then now you want to decide where is the tear? Is it proximal? Is it in the mid portion? Or is it distal?
Sometimes it's hard to decide and differentiate between a MCL tear and a meniscal tear. Joint line tenderness is specific for meniscal tear. The McMurray test, the Tessaly test, and Apley compression test are used for meniscal tears. With the Apley compression test, if the patient experiences pain with a click or a pop, then the test is positive for meniscal tear. The reason the test is called Apley compression test is because you need to apply compression. Now, if you rotate the tibia with distraction force and the patient experiences pain, then it is ligamentous injury and not a meniscal tear. If it is avulsed proximally, you can have the tenderness above the joint line and there might be a piece of bone avulsed from the epicondyle. In the mid substance, it may be hard to differentiate from meniscal tear. However, if it is avulsed from the tibia distally, then the tenderness is about six to eight centimeters from the joint and it acts like a sternal lesion. And this is the one that you probably need to fix. Proximal tear of the MCL from the femur heals better than distal tear, which occurs from the tibia. In the x-rays, you can see evidence of the chronic injury, Pellegrini stator syndrome, which it is calcification at the origin of the MCL. The MRI is good, will show you the location of the tear. Use T2 because it will show you the edema and the hemorrhage and will show you the location of the injury. Treatment usually non-operative and that ligaments usually heal with a scar. The scar matures in six weeks to one year and it has about 60% of the strength of the normal MCL. How do you treat the MCL? Usually treated with a hinged knee brace for six to eight weeks. Prophylactic hinged knee brace decrease the rate of MCL injuries in contact athletes. If there is a combined injury, like an ACL and MCL, the ACL will be reconstructed after the valgus stability is achieved, except in case of distal MCL tear. In this case, you will fix both. You need to fix the MCL and reconstruct the ACL. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.